Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Bridge. The doors are closed, but the church is open. I do have to admit, I already miss our Sunday gatherings. However, I'm excited about the opportunity that God is giving us to be creative and to pursue our times together and our ministry just a little bit differently during these times. Uh, I know some of you may be watching today, you are single and watching alone, maybe snuggled up with a blanket today. I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you. There's also many families that are together uh, today watching. I'm also thinking about you and I'm praying for you as well. Hopefully the kids will find some engaging material today. And parents, I love that you get to pastor church for your kids today. There will be an opportunity in the sermon to press pause and have a discussion with your friends or family that are in the room. Um, and hopefully there'll be some good engaging times for everybody. Let's just pray as we open up God's word today. God, during these troubled times and during these times of crisis, with everybody going crazy, we pray that you would bring peace instead of panic and we would have faith over fear. Um, speak your truth today, God. Thank you that we have your word to go to in times like this. And so we're going to listen and we're going to anticipate you speaking wonderful, beautiful, timely truth for us today. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've been thinking, I've been using this phrase quite a bit for our Bridge family. It's kind of become our little motto, so to speak, during the coronavirus. But more than a motto, it's our aspirational posture that we are taking together as a church. I said it in my prayer. Faith over fear. Peace over panic. Last week I had someone ask, what does that mean to have faith over fear? How can I get there? And I thought, that is a great question. Where do we go for answers to questions like that? Of course, we go right here. We go to the Bible, the truth that God has given us. So go ahead and grab your Bible. If you don't have it, feel free to press pause on the video. Go get your Bible, and um, when you get it, we can pick it up again. Turn in your Bibles to chapter 4 of Mark. Mark chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading in verse... 35 of Mark chapter 4. Have you got it? Mark chapter 4. Here we go. Verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he, uh, Jesus, said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with him in a boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. And he, Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Wow. I want to just give you a feel for what this scene might have looked like. Uh, as it turns out, I've actually been on this same body of water that Jesus was on a few times. It's the Sea of Galilee. It's really not a sea like we would think of a sea. It's really more of a lake. It's like a big lake. And I thought it might be fun for you to view this video of one of our Israel tour groups uh, singing and dancing on a boat on the Sea of Galilee. So uh, why don't you take a minute and uh, check out that video. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Now, to set the scene that Jesus was in, please don't picture the boat that we were just on. This is a way, way bigger boat than Jesus would have been in at the time. Instead, I want you to take a look at this picture. This picture is uh, remnants of a boat 
that is at a museum right next to the Sea of Galilee. It's called the Jesus Boat. It was salvaged from the bottom of the lake. It's probably not the exact boat that Jesus was on at this time, even though they call it the Jesus Boat. But this boat does date back to the first century, right around the time of Jesus. So this is most likely very similar to the exact boat that Jesus and his disciples were in. Here's another picture. Now, this picture is not real, it's just a drawing, but I think it's a pretty accurate depiction of what the boat would have been like with Jesus and his disciples just cramming in there to go sailing to the other side of the sea. So you see it was a very, very small boat. Not too sturdy, you know, the sides aren't too high. I mean, would you, think about it, would you like to be in a little boat like that during a huge storm? But that's exactly the situation being described here by Mark in his gospel. What a fearful situation they find themselves in. What a panicky situation they find themselves in. First of all, notice it says, when evening had come, right at the beginning, it says when evening had come. Now, that means it's getting lighter or darker when evening is coming. It's getting darker, of course, right? So this is becoming very quickly a dark scene. And so as it's getting darker, Jesus and some of his disciples get into the boat, head across the sea, and seemingly from out of nowhere, here comes this windstorm kicking up. Probably I'm, I'm picturing kind of like that two or three times a year in Bakersfield when we get that huge windstorm that comes through. You know, like out of nowhere, it fills our pools with dirt and clogs up the filters. I know because I'm my own pool boy. I got to clean it all out. But anyway, it was probably something like that. This huge storms and the waves are coming up and breaking over the boat. They're filling the boat with water. So picture these huge waves, white caps, this tiny little boat being tossed around all over the place, filling with water. And it even got to the point where the disciples thought that they were going to die. Now, consider this. Some of these fishermen, some of these disciples, excuse me, were fishermen. So being in a boat on the Sea of Galilee, this was their profession. This is what they did. They would have been used to these kind of storms that could come quickly on the Sea of Galilee. But imagine how bad this particular storm needed to be for these professional boatmen to think that this was it. This was the perfect storm. This is the one that was going to take their lives and they were going to die. Imagine the fear that they were feeling. Imagine that panic that they felt. Now, if you're viewing this with your family and friends, why don't you pause the video now? And when you pause, let's talk amongst ourselves about things that we sometimes feel afraid of. Things that cause us to sometimes freak out and panic. Also, uh, let's discuss the coronavirus. Maybe that and the coronavirus and the reaction of everyone is what is really causing you fear and panic right now. So go ahead, pause the video, and we'll pick it up from there when you're finished your discussion. Okay, welcome back. I think, listen, it's natural for all of us to feel a little fear and a little panic sometimes. And maybe especially now because of this worldwide pandemic that's going on. But let's get back to the Bible and see what God has to say about fear and panic when we sometimes feel those things. So, starting back in verse 38. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing, that we're dying? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you no faith? Whew, wow. The disciples were so afraid and they were panicking, thinking that they were going to die. But what was Jesus doing in the midst of all of this? He's sleeping. <laughs> He's sleeping. Can you imagine this scene? The boat is being tossed all over the place. The waves are crashing and the boat's filling up with water. They're all about to drown. How is it possible that Jesus is sleeping? Well, as we're going to see, Jesus has no fear and no panic in the storm. Listen, because he has power and authority over the storm. 
And though everything seems out of control, Jesus knows he is actually in absolute control over the situation. So he wakes up and he actually speaks to the storm. Did you catch that? Did you notice that in the passage? He, he, he takes this huge, seemingly out of control situation and he speaks to it. Says he rebukes the wind. And he says to the sea, notice what he says, I love this. He says, peace. Peace. Don't you love that? In the midst of the fear and the panic, Jesus says, peace, be still. And what happens? Boom, absolute calm. Like the wind just stops blowing and the seas calm down. I even picture it so dramatic that it becomes like that perfectly still scene, um, you know, on a lake where there's not a ripple and you can look over the edge of the boat and look into the water and see the reflection of your face. And imagine if that were to happen and the disciples are looking over and the shocked expression that they're seeing on their own face in the water. But then, Jesus turns from rebuking the storm and he kind of rebukes his disciples next. And he says, why were you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Oh, right? Ouch. Here Jesus is highlighting this same dichotomy that our little motto is trying to communicate. Fear and faith right? Fear and faith, they don't go together. Jesus is saying, if you have fear, if you're fearful, it shows that you have no faith. So where did the disciples go wrong? Where did they go wrong? Here it is. They were so focused on the storm around them that they forgot that they had the one who can calm the storm right there with them in their boat. They were so worried about the wind and the waves that they forgot that they had the one who can speak to the wind and speak to the waves right there with them in their boat. They thought that there was a chance that they were going to die. They weren't gonna make it through this storm. They were gonna drown before they got to the other side. But here's the thing, the creator of the universe, the Lord of all, the king of kings, the sovereign one, who was right there with them in the boat, he had already told them, did you catch this back in verse 35? He had already told them, we're going to the other side. He already said, we are going to the other side. He had already spoken what was going to happen. He had already made his promises and they were following the path that Jesus was laying out for them. They were right in the will of God. Now you say, wait, you, you mean that you can be following Jesus and right in the center of God's will and still a storm can come into your life and threaten you? <laughs> yes, you better believe it. Just because you got Jesus in your boat doesn't mean the storms aren't going to come. It doesn't mean the coronavirus is not going to come. But what the disciples missed is no matter how hard the wind blows or how big the waves get, or how much the virus spreads, or how many schools and churches get closed, or how little food there is on the shelves. Listen, if you've got Jesus in your boat, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid because you trust in the one who loves you, who is in control, who has authority over everything. And you don't need to panic because you've got the Prince of Peace sleeping in your boat. <laughs> wow. Now let me just clarify something. Does Jesus expect us not to even ever feel a little bit of a twinge of fear or panic starting to creep in at all into our minds? Well, here's what I would say about that. I think that that little tinge of fear or panic that starts to sneak up on us, that is actually temptation to take it further and to allow us to go into fear mode or panic mode. 
See that when we start to feel those feelings, that's when we have a choice. What am I going to do with this hint of fear or panic that's coming into my heart right now and wanting to take over? That's when we must make the decision to trust God, to have faith rather than letting the fear get comfortable and start to set up shop in our hearts and minds. That's when we choose peace instead of allowing the panic to cause our minds to race to all sorts of doomsday scenarios. And how can we do that? We need to take our eyes off of the wind and waves and focus on Jesus. Take our eyes and minds off of all of the doomsday coronavirus news and fears and panic. Put our eyes on Jesus. It's like Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Take every thought captive to obey Christ. You take that thought and you say, no, I'm going to obey Christ with this. That little tinge of fear or panic comes and we say, nope, not going to happen. Not today. I've got Jesus in my boat. Jesus is in control. He knows all about this. He has all authority and power over viruses and any storm situation that comes my way. So I'm not going to fear. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to panic. Not today. Hey, listen, fear, listen, panic. Let me introduce you to my Jesus who's sleeping right here in my boat. Oh, wow. When the sermon ends today, if you are with family and friends, I want you to take some time to discuss together. How, how do you think that you can actually take your eyes off of the storm and focus on Jesus to find faith and peace? How can we do that? Maybe we turn off our phones for a while. Instead of seeing every panicky headline that's coming through every five minutes, maybe we spend instead some time looking at God's word and finding his truth and peace there. Maybe we memorize some scripture verses so that we have God's truth and his comfort going around in our head instead of all those fears. Maybe we spend more time in prayer communicating with the Jesus who is in our boat. How about doing a family devotion every, every day? We can even do it one in the morning, one at night. Hey, we got nothing to do, right? For the most part, we got a lot of time on our hands. I'm sure you and your family can come up with some great ideas as well. As you do, consider spending some time looking at these couple passages of Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God gave us a fear, not a spirit, not a fear, but a power and love and self-control. John chapter 14, 26 through 27, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus says, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace, Jesus says, I leave to you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I love that passage. It reminds me that even better than having Jesus in your boat, you have the Holy Spirit of God that dwells inside of you. He's with you at all times. So we don't need to fear and we don't need to panic. So go ahead and spend some time discussing this together. As a reminder, um, you, you know, be asking each, each other those questions. When someone feels a little fearful or panicky, ask them, hey, is Jesus in your boat? Hey, is Jesus in your boat? Or maybe even ask yourself sometimes when you're starting to feel it, hey, is Jesus in my boat? Yes, he is. All right, let me, let me pray for you and we'll move on to some discussion. Oh, God, I thank you for your word and your truth that just speaks right into situations that we face right now. Every one of us, all of us faced with situations that could cause fear and panic. But God, you are bigger than all of that. You're right there in our boat. You will never leave us and forsake us. You speak truth. You have authority. So help us, God, and various ways to take our eyes off of the storm and off of all of the, the bad and the fear and the panic and instead focus in on you. And I know that you will meet us there and you will help grow our faith over fear and grow us in peace over panic. Thank you, Jesus, for being in our boat right now. We love you in your name. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Hey, we are here for each other, right? Faith over fear, peace over panic. God bless.